just want to thank you guys for uh, listening. Uh, I, I feel like I don't say it enough, but um, for the people who actually do listen consistently and continue to check out the show, I just want to say thank you. Um, and, and, and keep inviting people to, you know, listen to the show. If you want to come on the show and be a guest, just hit me up, man. Uh, Twitter or Instagram. I'm, I'm always open to a new guest. I'm always open to new perspectives, new minds. Um, you know, we got a lot going on in the sports world, especially here in Philadelphia with, uh, you know, four or five major teams here, major sports. So I'm always looking for new guests uh, and new minds. Anything to help the brand. And yeah, I also want to thank my guy, Willie, uh, my guy, Phil, uh, just for always helping me out with the show, supporting the show. You know, retweeting and liking on, on, on Twitter goes a long way. Um, as far as helping the brand and, you know, just getting it out there to more people. So I do want to thank everybody um, that had to do it without the support system that I have. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's let's dive right in, man. You know, we're coming off a, a Sixers loss, uh, first playoff game against Boston last night. Um, honestly, honestly pissed me off, you know, per usual with Brett Brown, it, it, it never ceases to advancements and, and the things that he does with coaching just, it doesn't fit what I believe about basketball uh, as somebody that played basketball for a long ass time. Um, I, I hate to say it, but you know, I know high school coaches that are better than Brett Brown. Like he's a good dude, maybe a good basketball, similar to Gabe Kapler, you know, pushover, players coach, players coach. No, we don't No, The point of a coach is to lead a team, lead a group of men. And um, that's not what he does. And, and it, it reflects on everything in that in that basketball team. Um, I get it. The GM, Elton Brand, and then the coach, that's fine. Um, but it doesn't take any more blame from Brett Brown. I, I still believe he needs to go like yesterday. They should have fired him before the playoffs we would be in the same boat. It wouldn't matter because he doesn't make adjustments. We're going to end. We, I, you see the starting lineup, Al Horford and Joel Embiid on the floor at the same time. It's like beating a dead horse. It doesn't work in today's game. It doesn't work. If it ain't Giannis and, and Brooke Lopez, it don't work. The NBA is about being able to defend the three-point line. That's the point. And, you know, people that know me, people that, you know, read my articles, check out my content, they know what I was saying the entire time before the game. And it's not like I'm hating on Al Horford. You know, Al Horford showed good energy at times last night. You know, not helping on the boards. I mean, we got out rebounded, even though we're playing big bully ball. How does that happen if we're if we're playing a small ball team, but they still out rebound us? Don't know about that. So what's the point of bully ball? I don't I don't get it. it it's it's out of date. It's out of touch. Literally, it's out of touch. You need perimeter defenders, and you need as many of them on the court as you can get. Now. You know, obviously Embiid isn't a perimeter defender. He's a premier center that affects the offensive end and the defensive end heavily. He protects the paint and he controls the paint on offense. It's a big difference in Al Horford. Al Horford is a much, but you know, you get get that occasional bucket, you know, when he's, he roars yesterday. And, and trust me, that got me hyped. At that point in the game, I, I was like, oh man, we about to win. And it all went downhill, literally after that, went downhill. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll get into all that stuff. You know, I think everything is going wrong. I think, you know, Sixers fans are counting them out. And, and you know, to an extent it is, it's as if, you know, we know Brett Brown won't make the right adjustments. He won't do what's right on the court. So, you know, it's a tug of war in that situation. I'm just not one. I'm, I'm more of in ways that I can build my team to win and, and you know, kind of just figure it out in my own sense. And then go from there. If the team steers away from it and wins, great. If they steer away from it and lose, you should have listened to me, right? You know what I mean? So um, at the end of the day, I'm not a basketball coach. I, I know that. And, you know, I'm you know, I'm not going to take his job. But, you know, it's just about simplifying. When you have an in injury like Ben Simmons, you simplify the game. And that's what Brett Brown fails to realize, saying he's not he's not worried about getting and beating the ball more. You know, not worried about trying. 
okay, we get it. You guys don't think that they have four shooters. Sure. But they have four perimeter defenders, and they have four guys that uh, they have a better chance of making the shot than Al Horford. So what's the point of Al Horford? I don't get it. Unless it's to give and beat a break. That's the only thing he's useful for. Then it's got to go to somewhere and somebody. And, you know, you rather it go to a veteran, I guess, than, you know, a young guy. Um, which it, it brings me to my first point. Um, you know, I said start Bible before the game instead of Al Horford, you know. How he gets in the game. Obviously, he's the best defender on the team. He needs to play a lot of minutes for sure. Everybody could see that last night. I mean, he comes in, you know, 31 minutes, gets two steals a block, you know, and and and, and the little things. He's he's just in the right right place at the right time, stuff like that. Obviously, he's not a. <laughs> if you look at Al Horford, neither is he. He put up six points. I will put up five. Who cares? It obviously, wasn't about offense at that point. So, you know, to this sense of this bully ball and just not adjusting, I'm, I'm also not in the shit of an offense, of a, of a game plan down other teams' throats. That's not how it works unless you're great at what you do. The Sixers aren't great at bully ball. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a good look. It, it doesn't work. That's why they're in the sixth seed. Um, obviously injuries, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Which we'll, we'll, uh, and if we, we continue to do this the rest of the postseason, then sure, Brett Brown will get another pass till next year. That's what we want? No, I'm over it. We want it out of here. Stop. It's got to go. I mean, even if you, if you just look at the turnovers, that's a bad coach team. I get it. We don't, yo, uh, come on. There, there's, there is less talented teams that don't do the fundamental woes that the Sixers do. The turnovers, dumb defensive plays. I mean, you you watched Jalen Brown last night in the first quarter, and it's Al Horford guarding Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, how is that logical? Al Horford can't even score on Jalen Brown, so it's not a mismatch on that end. So what's the point? What is the point other than to get Embiid a rest? And you're not resting Embiid if they're on the court at the same time. So, I mean, just first of all, Joel Embiid and Al Horford don't need to touch the court at the same time. Sure, start him, whatever. If that makes Al Horford feel better, more confident, start him. You know what I mean? First four minutes, get him out. Get him out. Jalen Brown had what, 10 points in the first quarter? off of like three wide open threes. Like you just doesn't make sense. And what people aren't understanding is that, yes, I get it. Thibault can't come in and just be there in a Horford spot. Duh, duh. He comes in, his minutes didn't matter last night because you had him at a shooting guard. And you still had, that's where the defense laps. Okay, so my point, you know, Horford, to, to give him a little bit of credit for last night, wasn't a world beater game, wasn't the greatest game, you know, that's ever been had by a, a power forward or Al Horford. Like, it wasn't that great of a game yet. Where's the mismatch? Where's the mismatch? The only mismatch is in B, which is my other point. Brett Brown makes some adjustments how does Embiid come in fourth out, out of that total game of shot attempts? Oh, that doesn't make sense, man. That doesn't make sense. Joel Embiid is the best player in the series, but he gets the fourth amount of touches, or fourth amount of shots, I should say, on his own team. Now you look at that fourth quarter, he took what, three or four shots? One of your best players in Ben Simmons. And Joel Embiid gets four shots in the fourth quarter. That's losing basketball. I don't care who it is. If it's Joel Embiid not getting down in the paint, Brett Brown, you're the coach, the leader. Tell his ass to get in the paint. You're seven foot. They have Ennis Cantor on the floor guarding him. Robert Williams. Daniel Tight. Come on. Come on. This is ridiculous. There's no reason Joel Embiid shouldn't have a 30-piece every night unless he's out of shape. Which, by the way, he did look tired out there last night. 
while Embiid's on the floor so that Embiid can get a little bit more rest. Because I'd rather have, you know, fresh Embiid for 35, 36 minutes than Embiid, you know, how many minutes? 37 minutes. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd rather have him in there, even drop it down lower than that if that's what he needs. 33, 34 minutes. He, he played 37 in that to, to play better in spurts. That's better for the team. Tired and beat is useless for the team. Brett Brown, make an adjustment. Make an adjustment on offense. Make an adjustment on defense. Make a goddamn adjustment. Anything. X on the court all season that got us a sixth seed with second or third seed talent. That makes no sense. And it makes zero sense to start Al Horford big bully ball against one of the best small ball teams in the end. Better small ball teams. What, the Rockets, I guess? <laughs> what are we doing? You... Uh, you walk into a game confidently thinking that Al Horford can guard Jalen Brown. It's a serious question. Is that competent coaching? Is that okay? No, man. Come on. Come on. I know Brad Brown sucks as a coach, but you can't be coaching an NBA team like this. This is ridiculous. And it's been years on years. So, you know, the tolerance is... It's not there anymore. It, it, it's over. It's over. I can't say this enough, man. Adjustments. <laughs> Make some adjustments. Jesus. <sighs> you know, I just, I, I don't get it. And you are just conceded to the season. I get it, Ben Simmons, great player. Conceded to the season, Ben Simmons is gone, we give up. The East looks weak <laughs> again right now. You, you just saw the Bucks today, they, they just got blew out by the Orlando Magic eight seed. Without Jonathan Isaac, with the beat up Aaron Gordon, game since they entered the bubble. But you know who's gonna go in and who's gonna steal the playoffs? Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. And you know why Jimmy Butler probably went down to Miami, wanted to go to Miami? Because Eric Spolstra is a... There's no leader in that locker room. And we, we already knew that. Joel and B could be the leader, sure. But he won't even take his ass down in the paint. Joel and B didn't have a bad game. He just didn't have the best game that he could. And he got outplayed by Jason Tatum. I'm a Duke fan, bro. So that shit don't hurt me when Jason Tatum... I know Jason Tatum cooks. You're going to put this mediocre lineup out there that can't guard people that can handle the ball on the perimeter and shoot from three. He's going to cook your ass. Obviously, you don't have Ben Simmons to guard him, who usually would. Especially now that Gordon Hayward is out for what's, what's looking like the rest of this series. Huge loss. People can downplay it all they want, say Gordon Hayward isn't that good. He's another guy that can drop 25, 30 points in one night, a given night. And if he gives them one night of that during this series, then we're going to lose that game. So to see him gone and you see him, thank you. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Because if you look at last night, if we just made some adjustments, we would have won the game. We would have won the game. Isn't that crazy? Even with, you know, these guys, Tobias Harris deserved the contract, which is not what I was expecting, obviously. Trust Toby. <laughs> How? How can you? How can you? Shoot the ball. Drive to the paint, dude. You're, you're what? 6'8", six, 6'9"? Six, I don't know. Go to the paint. What's up with this team not getting? I'm not three-point shooters. <sighs> Man, I just want to see Tobias be aggressive, man, because when he drives to the rack, he's actually pretty successful. He gets to the line, he can finish, he's got the mid-range, and yes, I do like to see him take the wide open three, but don't settle for threes. Only sends it out to him for a wide open look. It's a simple game plan. It's a simple game plan, very simple. You live and you die by it, but instead we live and die by it on the defensive end instead. I'd rather play great defense and, and struggle to score than 
to, you know, just give up free points at will with him. I don't know. I mean, maybe I should just fall into the same mindset, you know. I mean, we got the Flyers. The Flyers are good. They're 3-1 and one in their series. Carter Hart just posted two, two shutouts in a row against a team that only got shut out once in the entire season. Carter Hart is a caliber player. Carter Hart is an elite goal, goalie, goaltender. Flyers, they lose a game, they turn it around. What are the Sixers going to do? Because you know what the Flyers have? They have a great coach in L.A. Vignon. <laughs> that you know in game two when you saw that blowout that the Flyers weren't going to come out looking like that in game three. But me, after Brett Brown's comments after the game, why should I expect anything different tomorrow at 6.30? He comes out and acts like he made the right call. Nothing else. This is what it's like to be a Sixers fan, man. It is frustrating. Just saw the Caps got eliminated from the playoffs. That's good news. Hockey's going great, man. Philly is living it up. Penguins. Everything's great with the Flyers. I will. I'm going to shout them out later because I could. I could do a whole episode on them. But um, man, I don't know. I was going to do this this video last night. You know, I kind of wanted to see what that first game was looking like before I spoke my mind. Um, because you know, I do respond on you know game plan. It's just my opinion. That's all this show is is my opinion. But after last night. If you still side with Brett Brown, there's a problem. There, there was a problem. I mean, let's be real. There's a problem if you're siding with Brett Brown, period, at this point. But especially, you know, it going. So my three keys to success, you know, going into the series was, and, and they're the same right now, you know. I mean, nothing's changed. I mean, last night didn't prove anything to me except that, you know, Tobias, it, if he can't do more than that, then no, he's not worth until that's gone. And Al Horford, we knew he wasn't worth that that contract. But I thought maybe, you know, he would show something. Say, you know, give us life. And, and it, sure. <laughs> that one play where he roared at the sideline, yelled it out. Oh, man, I was, I was ecstatic. That was the last you heard from him. You didn't hear a peep. What, that was midway through the third quarter? Al Horford disappeared. All we started doing is getting out rebounded. They're getting five opportunities of possession. <sighs> three keys. Uh, insert Thibault into the starting lineup for Al Horford. Okay. So why does this make sense? Why does this make sense? Think about it real set, real quick before I tell you why it makes sense. It makes sense because what you look at the Celtics starting lineup, last starting lineup now. So last night you had Kemba Walker, Gordon Hayward, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Daniel Tice. How many ball handlers were named there? That's four. So what does that mean? That means you need four. So what does that mean? Obviously, Tobias isn't the greatest defender. You don't want him on Jason Tatum. I don't even want him on uh, Jalen Brown. Guess what? If you shift everybody down a position, so you bring... Put Bible in power forward. No, I'm not saying that. It's matchups. It's all about matchups, right? So even if Bible is only giving you five points, at least he is strapping up Jason Tatum. Now, mind you, a small sample size of, of Thibault. I think he only had, what, like four points, two for eight shooting, something like that. Not not a huge sample size, but it speaks to something if he had, what, 28 points on everybody else. Because he's sitting there wide open, blowing by Al Horford. <laughs> Come on. Guess what? Guess what? Shake no. You guard Kemba. I know it's not the best matchup in the world, but it's better than Horford versus Jalen Brown. Josh Richardson, 
you guard Jalen Brown. I'm sorry, Jalen Brown. It's not Al Horford, sorry. So then we put Thibel on Jason Tatum. Now, obviously, you, you need Thibel to stay out of foul trouble. And that's fine if you have if you have to put Horford in there. Three minutes here, two minutes there. Spurts. He played well in spurts last night. He's old. He needs a conserve energy throughout the game. Little spurts is fine for Al Horford. He looked energized at times, and then he just falls off the face of the earth. Which speaks to my point. You, you give him beat a rest, brain rest for a Joel and B. This is, it is rocket science. It, it truly isn't. Um, so you got Thibel on Jason Tatum. You can throw Tobias Harris on Marcus Smart. He's not an offensive threat. Come on. Tobias. I, I get it. Tobias can't play that good a defense, but Hayward ain't that good, man. They, that's actually a pretty good matchup. Come on. Hayward ain't quick. That's what Tobias struggles with, is quickness. And then you have Embiid for Thais. Uh, and then and then you just spread it out on offense. Corner threes, put them in the corner. Let Embiid go down to the post. If he gets a double team, kick it out to the open shooter. It's not rocket science, but for Brett Brown it is. This is just simple basketball logistics. You have a dominant force in the middle, you give it to the dominant force to attract, feels all the extra attention. You give it to the force that doesn't have attention towards it, the open shooter. Now you're telling me if we have four guys, Thibel in the corner, Josh Richardson out here, Shake Milton out here, and Tobias floating around wherever he needs. You're telling me these four guys can't hit shots. And then you're telling me if Cork Moss comes in, he can't hit shots. And if Burks comes in, he can't hit shots. Come on. Come on. By the way, Bur Burks, great minutes. Loved it. Loved it. Glad he's finally getting, you know, the, the role that he deserves on this team. Because, I mean, for a while there, once again, Brett Brown's looking really lost. Glad he made that adjustment. But he won't make the one that really matters. I get it. Thibault play, played 31 minutes. But it is all about who he's on the court with, who Embiid is on the court with, who Horford is on the court with. There's no reason Horford can't be that second team anchor. There's no reason. Thibel, it, it's matchups, man. It's matchups. Just get through this series. That you can win at win with just get through the series man and we'll go from there <sighs> in a weak eastern conference man you know this would be the year ben simmons gets injury it's not there Kawhi's not there you know the bucks they're pulling their typical choke which, by the way, the Bucks are going to turn it around. I'm, I'm bullshitting you. They're going to make it to the second round, but they, they don't look good, and they haven't looked good since the bubble play started. But, you know, Sixers home of disappointment. Got it out, you know, and I'm going to keep saying, start Bible, start Bible. And if you don't want to start him, you know, get Horford out there in the starting lineup and then send him out, you know, first three, four minutes. Switch it quick. Just give him spurts, man. He doesn't need to play it all at once. Just a few guys uh, that I actually was impressed with. You know, Burks, 18 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. Uh, Shake, 13 points, 5 for 7 shooting. Sh still struggling on the defensive end. He looks lost at times. He's a young boy. He's athletic enough that I, I still would just put him out there and hope, hope that, it, that at least he can shoot and score. <laughs> Like, benefit us on one or the other at least if you're not going to be a two-way player. Please. Um, Josh Richardson, I need him to be a little more consistent. He looks lost at times in the game, too, even though he had 18 points. I feel like a lot of thrown-up shots, you know. And maybe that's just the way he play. I don't, I don't know. It's not the Josh Richardson I know from Miami. Um, but it seems like everybody comes here and they forget how to play under Brett Brown. 
you know, the Sixers passed over Jason Tatum. Duke favorite of mine, best in that draft. He could, he could score any way that you need. He's got so many tools in the bag. Man, come on. But you know what? He wouldn't have succeeded with Brett Brown, so there ain't no point. Glad we didn't draft him, because we had a room. It's insane, man. Uh, it's, it's insane. Jason Tatum, 32 points, 13 rebounds. Jalen Brown, 29 points, five for eight from the three, because he's shooting wide open shots, because you know, maybe Al Horford couldn't stay with him off the dribble, or maybe Al Horford wasn't even there because he could I'm not here to rag on Al Horford. Didn't think he had the worst game ever yesterday. Just don't think it's a good matchup, period. People talk about the offensive match. It's not an offensive mismatch anymore. He doesn't, he doesn't, he can't play down low because Embiid's down there. What's the mismatch? You're trying to clear. That's my spiel on the Sixers. I'm done with that for tonight. Um, game two, don't expect any adjustments, but if you were to make some adjustments, I would expect uh, Thibel, you know, more minutes out there with Horford off the court. Four perimeter defenders in the end and be just match up. And and on the offense, simplify it. Get the ball to Embiid. And especially in the fourth quarter. Four four shots. Every single every single possession last night in the fourth quarter, I looked at my girlfriend and I said, Embiid's not gonna touch. Oh look, an untimely timeout in the third quarter when the Sixers are on the run. It's bad coaching, man. It's simple. And yeah, maybe Embiid doesn't have, you know, what it takes to be the best or the most dominant. Maybe he doesn't have the drive, but guess what? That's the coach's job to get it out of him. He's not, not here to rag on Brett Brown's character. He's not inspirational, obviously. He's just somebody that, that the players can run over. They love him as a coach because they can do whatever the whatever they want. <laughs> Um, man, if, if, if we can just make any type of a four to two, we could beat the Celtics in this series four to two. Will it happen? Don't know. We could beat the Celtics, though. They're not that good. There's nobody in the East that's that good. Toronto is probably the best team chemistry wise. They're probably looking the best. Overall, I'm just, I'm, I'm frustrated, man, with the Sixers. Um, you know, next year. I'm, I'm not trying to watch this same shit next year, you know, because it's, it's a disgrace to basketball. Um, the turnovers, disgraceful to the basketball, wide open shots, disgraceful in the playoffs. More. I've watched a team like the Eagles go through injuries, struggle, and they get back because they have resiliency. They have leadership. Done talking about it. Done talking about it. Come out and win the game. I know the Sixers can win the game. I know they can. I'm going to leave that at that. You know, I'm just give you a real quick preview of uh, all my playoff matchups. Um, I'm just going to go down through the list. I just got some picks to make. Bucks and Magic. Obviously, I'm going Bucks here. But Magic did take that game one. That's kind of crazy. Kind of gives you that feeling like, uh, oh, the Bucks, are they serious? We don't know. We don't know, right? Um, the Raptors and Nets. <laughs> if there's one team in the East that will take care of business, it's them. Uh, I think they're the, probably the most well put together team right now. Obviously, Giannis, the best player in the East, but that team just isn't looking great right now. Uh, something Sixers. I'm still going Sixers, man. I, I'm telling you, we could beat them. Brett Brown, shh, I hope that he gets fired. Or I'm going to go through the through a brick wall if he doesn't, you know, if we lose and he doesn't. Um, Pacers and Heat, I'm going Heat here. Uh, you know, the Heat, they, they're a team that can challenge the Bucks, especially if the Bucks are playing on a team and they got a great leader, Jimmy Butler, right? Um, Lakers and Portland, that's an interesting matchup. 
Uh, as much as I want to pick Portland, love Portland's team. I love their style. I love uh, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. Mad love for Melo. Love that dude. Uh, laughing in everybody's face right now how he was hitting those big shots to get Portland in there. Obviously, Dame Lillard leads that team. Um, Nurkic, ever since he's been back, they look like a completely different team. Another Duke guy, Gary Trent Jr. Mm. Why can't the Sixers grab guys like this? Selton Brand trades away off all their draft picks. <laughs> Clips for Mavs. Man, that was another tough one for me because I do like the Mavs a lot, but the Clippers are my favorite to win that whole thing, so I couldn't go against them there. Love Luca, man. Luca had 42 last night. Uh, ejection. Who knows how that game goes, man? It was a close one. Uh, which brings up another point, you know, that flagrant foul that they called on Horford, that kind of changed the landscape of the game as well. Changed a lot of momentum for sure. That was some weak. That was a weak. The refs are a whole other issue. Um, Nuggets or Jazz, another tough series. I'm going Nuggets here. They look pretty good. Um, I saw Donovan Mitchell had a crazy game. Never would have expected that. I mean, he's good. But I didn't know he was a 50-point scorer. Damn. <laughs> um, team Michael Porter Jr. Mm, turning it up now, right? Showing us why he was the number one nationally ranked player going into college before he broke his back at Missouri. Mm. Nuggets got some steals. Bowl, bowl. Michael Porter Jr. team. Jokic is the centerpiece. Got Jamal Murray out there. Scored 20 points in the fourth quarter in overtime. That's how you do it. Oh, my God. Uh, finally, we got the Rockets and the Thunder. Um... I'm going to go to runner ends, I would say. James Harden's probably the best player in the series. Um, you don't always go with the best player in the series, but James Harden, he plays well enough. If they can get Russell Westbrook back late in the series, they should be able to pull that one out. Okay, he's a very respectable team, though. Chris, uh, CP3's done wonders with that team. Uh, Shy Gill, great young uh, guard. Uh, you got Gallinari over there. Steven Adams, a stud center, gets the job done. They got a solid team, but uh, the Rockets shooting, that small ball is going to get them out of there. Um, Harden's a monster. Um, As far as my Eastern Conference Finals, man, I'm not even going to lie to you, even with Ben Simmons injury. But, you know, after seeing the coaching, if we can't make adjustments, then, you know, it's going to be the Bucks and Raptors, most likely. The Heat could challenge the Bucks, but I'm predicting Bucks Raptors. Um, Bucks, I'm not sure about that anymore. I'll still keep them as my pick, but uh, Raptors look like the better all around team, if I'm being honest. Um, Clippers and Lakers, obviously Western Conference Finals for me. I don't see how you can pick it any other way, unless you're just some, you know, an LA hater, uh, which I semi am, but I can't hate them. League. Uh, along with the Bucks, um, I do have the Clippers going to the finals over the Lakers. Clippers win the finals over the over the Bucks. Kawhi straps up Giannis again. Giannis chokes. Uh, Kawhi doesn't choke. Kawhi, best player in the NBA uh, when he wants to be. Best to be the best player. He's the best player, and you'll see that down the stretch. You'll see it. Um, my rookies of the playoffs. Uh, I got Michael Porter Jr. Uh, Kendrick Nunn's another, you know, low-key guy from Miami that that could possibly, you know, steal some thunder. But Michael Porter Jr.'s been killing it since the bowl. Um, Biggest sleeper, definitely between Portland and OKC. Uh, I did see Houston blew out OKC. Um, And I I don't think Portland will beat the Lakers, but... They, they, they'll give them a test for sure. Portland's the worst team that could have got that eighth seed in the Lakers case. I know people don't have a lot of faith. I still got faith. I just know they have to do it without their head coach's help. So that like kind of weakens the odds of that, <laughs> if, if, if that makes sense. Um, but even without Ben, I- <laughs> A lot of people are probably laughing at me. I get it. Um, and then I'm just going to finish up the show. Uh, 
top five players, you know, in the playoffs right now. So you got Kawhi Leonard, uh, Anthony Davis, Giannis, LeBron, and then at five, it's like a toss up between Harden. Those guys, monsters. There's a lot of honorable mentions. Joel Embiid, you know, Jason Tatum's probably uh, top 10, fringe top 10 maybe. Don't think he's better than Embiid yet, but it's yet to be seen. Um, as far as uh, just wanna just wanna thank you for giving me solid solidarity today, um, man. I was working while they were playing. I didn't get to watch much, but you know another shutout from Carter Hart. Glad we get to watch these guys. You know while we have to endure this Phillies and, and Sixers teams. Um, luckily, you know I know I know we're hearing the little injury, the little minor injuries. They're just being safe precautions. It's all right. I, I just know that team, even if there are injuries, they'll still give me more hope than with these these two teams, these Phillies and Sixers, man. Which maybe the Phillies makes adjustments. That's what I'm going to name this episode. Adjustments. Because we don't make them. We don't make them. But thank you to the Flyers, man. It's been nothing but love since they came back into the bubble you know what i mean since they started playing hockey right now that you feel like hmm, they could win it all they could and maybe they should maybe carter hart should win it right young 22 years old maybe he should win it at 22 who cares start this greatness early philly deserves a young great Loving me some Flyers hockey right now. But um, that's all I got for you guys tonight, man. I hope you all enjoyed my spiel. Um, I'm not in the best mood, honestly. I'm in a very negative mind state with the way the Sixers play. Like, no, by tomorrow, I will be back with my positive energy. I will be back. I'll already have myself, you know, <laughs> optimistic back in the air, optiz optimism back in the air. Um, just give me some time to process. The process, you know. You know, it's your job at this point. Try something different to save your job. Don't you think that's a good idea? Try something. But uh, guys, please just keep the faith. Keep the faith, guys. I know it's hard with Brett Brown. I know. It's hard losing Ben Simmons, your second best player. And it's not going to get easier. But keep the faith. We are Philadelphia, and we do fight through injuries. We do show resiliency. We do show pride. Go out there and battle. They played hard last night. Just hard and hard and sloppy, if that makes sense. <laughs> Turn. Hmm. Gordon Hayward injury will help, but um. Uh, by the way, uh, the raffle did end today. I will be picking a lucky winner for the shirt uh, after this episode. And uh, we'll be notifying them tomorrow. I will hit you up. Um, I do want to, once again, you know, thank you to Phil, Will, my guys, support me. Anybody else that supports, everybody that listens, I do appreciate you. Um, it's a negative time right now watching the Sixers. I get it. It's almost split in the fan base, you know, per usual. Um, tomorrow night, the Sixers are going to need it. They need us to support them. They need our optimism. Um, please, Brett Brown, please. <laughs> please. Uh, that's that's going to be a wrap for me, guys. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Uh, Scotty Drowned is my personal account. ST Philly Sports One is the the sports page. Um, trust me, I'm a lot more optimistic on Twitter than I am right now because uh, you know it's a mixture of being disappointed in the team, but also being disappointed in fans. Uh, trying to find that balance here, and you know, bring that energy that the Sixers need to win this series against Boston. Throw a like, throw a subscribe, follow me on Twitter, follow me on IG. Much love, Philly. Uh, and that's a wrap from Scotty. Have a nice night, guys.